Well, let's step into the Pleasure Lady's kitchen today and make Asian pomegranate barbecue stir fry sauce. So let's get started. Well, good day, everybody. Today we're going to be making the Asian pomegranate barbecue and stir fry sauce. You can find this recipe in the all new ball book of canning and preserving. It's on page 182. So if you want to follow along, the only thing is that I'm going to be doing differently is that I'm making mine in my Ball Fresh Tech Automatic Jam and Jelly Maker. So let's get started. Remember that uh, pomegranate molasses that I video that I did? Well, this is where we, we would be using that molasses in. And the reason why made that video is because I have no stores in my area that I can just readily go to and pick up pomegranate molasses. That's why I had to make mine. And it's sitting right here. So I want to get started in making this. So what we're going to be needing is I have three cups of chicken stock. So go ahead and pour that into the pan. And then to that, we're going to be adding one and a half cups of ketchup. And then we're going to be adding a half a cup of packed brown sugar. And then we're going to be adding a half a cup of soy sauce. And then we're going to be adding a half a cup of uh, that pomegranate molasses. And yes, I have sampled it, and it is just like molasses, folks. I mean, I am not saying it tastes exactly like molasses. It has that pomegranate taste, but it also has that distinctive molasses, molasses taste. Okay, and then we're going to be adding one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce.
and then we're going to be adding one teaspoon. I'm using ground ginger. And if you don't have the ground ginger, you can go ahead and use two teaspoons of the coarsely chopped fresh ginger. And then I'm going to be using one clove of the dried minced garlic, which would be one teaspoon. But if you're using fresh, it would be two cloves. And then I have to get my gloves on for the next part. I cut the top off. And then I go ahead and just cut mine all the way down the middle. And I'll remove any of the white pith and all the seeds. See, like all that. I'm going to pull out of each. And also I want to give a little tip. When you're doing the de-seeding and getting that white pit part out of the peppers here, I do it on a damp paper towel. That way the seeds and all that stick and <laughs> it's just easier to clean up with the damp. So, I'm going to set that off over here to the side and bring this over. Now, I'm just going to put the serrano peppers in here. Okay, and there you go. Let's go ahead and add them. And folks, please do not touch these by hand. Your hands will be burning really bad if you touch them with your bare hands. So please go out and invest in some of these disposable gloves. Okay, and then we're going to be need to add one cinnamon stick. Sorry, I should have opened it before I even was going to use it, but I didn't. And then we're going to be adding one fourth teaspoon of the fennel seeds. telling us that it wants us to bring this up to a boil and reduce and simmer it for 20 minutes. So that's telling me I would put it on the jam setting. So go ahead, push the jam button and come up here and go ahead, push enter. And I'll see you in 21. Okay, it should be sounding off real soon. 
it has thickened up somewhat for us and I already went ahead and I went ahead and set up my food meal so I could strain the contents of the pan into because I don't have a there it is because I don't have a wire uh, mesh strainer at the time so let's go ahead and you're gonna have to allow this to go through the cool off period so I'm gonna strain this through And while it's in the cool off period, I'm also going to rinse out my pan here. And we'll see you when it's ready to rock and roll. Pan back here. Okay, and to that, we're going to be adding a half cup of sugar. Push your jam button and go up here and push the enter and now we're going to be uh, letting the jam and jelly maker here help dissolve that sugar that we put in and it's going to do all that stirring for us so your arms not going to even get tired of stirring you don't have to be over a hot pot stirring this little baby does it all for you and the instructions tell us that we're going to be bringing this back up to a boil so that's almost quite a full cycle not quite a full cycle but almost I'm going to be watching it and I'll be bringing you back at that point when we can put it into our jars. Go ahead and ladle it into your jars. You're going to want to leave one fourth inch head space. And I've already tasted this, and it is divine. I cannot wait to try the recipe they have right next to it in the canning cookbook. And I will be bringing you along, and I will be showing you how to do that recipe as well. I have too much in there. I have to grab a spoon, vinegar, so I can wipe the rim of my jar. And I just want to make sure because I did spill going over, so I really want to pay close attention. And I like wiping the threads as well. Go ahead, grab your lid. Put your lid on. Go ahead, grab a canning ring. And you're going to want to finger tighten it. 